Charlie Vark is a 1973 heist thriller by director Don Siegel based on the 1968 novel The Looters by John H. Reese. The film stars Walter Matthau as Charlie Vark, a former stunt pilot and crop duster who resorts to a life of petty bank robberies but bites off more than he can chew when a $750,000 haul out of a small New Mexico bank turns out to be mob money. Andrew Robinson, John Vernon, Felicia Farr, Norman Fell, and Joe Dunn Baker round out the cast. Although the film was well received by American film reviewers, with one reviewer, Paul Tatara, calling it intelligent commercial filmmaking at its finest, the film didn't win any awards stateside. But in 1974, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts gave Matthau its Best Actor Award and nominated Frank Morris for his editing on the film. Charlie Vark begins in Trey's Cruces, New Mexico, where a yellow Lincoln pulls up in front of a small bank. A sheriff's deputy is nearby and tells the middle-aged couple in the car that they can't park in front of the bank. Charlie Vark is disguised as a much older man and has a fake cast on his leg. His wife is behind the wheel and they put on a fake argument for the cop after she offers to cash the check and he insists on cashing it himself. The cop leaves and doubles back to the bank after running the stolen license plates on the Lincoln. Meanwhile, all hell breaks loose in the bank as Charlie and his two accomplices exchange gunfire with the guards. The sheriff's deputies arrive on the scene and when they approach the Lincoln to question Nadine, she shoots and kills a deputy, wounds the other, and takes a shot herself through her door. Charlie returns to the Lincoln with one accomplice. The other accomplice was shot and killed by a guard. The Lincoln speeds away and at a remote location, Charlie and Harmon Sullivan load the bags of stolen money into large drums inside of Charlie's crop dusting van. Nadine dies from her gunshot wound. Charlie kisses her goodbye and rigs the car with explosives. They go back to Charlie's trailer home and count the loot. Charlie used to be a stunt flyer at shows. His wife worked with him. Then he became a crop duster. When the combines put him out of business, he decided to rob banks, small banks, a thousand or two here and there, nothing big. Charlie looks down at the pile of money on the floor of his trailer, 50 and $100 stacks. Why would a small bank like that be holding this much money? He turns on the TV news and gets his answer. The bank reported it had been robbed of only $1,500, and there was a quarter mil cash on his floor. They'd stolen mob money. Charlie is cautious, but Harmon is much younger and very impatient. Charlie wants to wait a few years for the heat to die down before spending any of the money. But Harmon wants the good life, beautiful chicks, fancy restaurants, nice clothes, and not even Charlie was going to stop it from happening right now. With a nod and a mysterious smile, Charlie agrees to go along with Harmon. Charlie Bark is a pretty straightforward film. Even so, there are Machiavellian lessons in it that are worth a mention, like the importance of thinking ahead being careful in whom you place your trust in, the value in being decisive, and knowing when to keep your mouth shut. Sun Tzu, The Art of War, Chapter 1, Laying Plans. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. And also from Chapter 7, Maneuvering. Let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night, and when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. The first lesson in Charlie Vark is thinking ahead. Art of War Chapter 9, The Army on the March. If forced to fight in a salt marsh, you should have water and grass near you and get your back to a clump of trees. So much for operations in salt marshes. 
Charlie is older, experienced and wise, made his share of mistakes as a younger man. The main mistake being that of not thinking ahead and planning his future instead of robbing small banks. Old men can afford fewer mistakes than young men. Recklessness almost got him killed in the stunt plane as a younger man, and he isn't about to let Harmon's impatience get him killed by the mafia at this late stage of his life. No way. The second lesson in the film is to not trust anybody. Art of War Chapter 8, Variation of Tactics. The Art of War teaches us to rely not on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but on our own readiness to receive him. Not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. Charlie knows that the world is about money, not loyalty. Any man that you pay for anything will always sell to the highest bidder. Charlie pays $600 to Tom at the gun shop knowing in advance that the man will give him up to the hit man named Molly for a price. Charlie also knows that Jewel the photographer will sell him out. For this reason, he gives her Harmon's picture to get Molly to kill Harmon preemptively after the dummy threatened his life. Also, when Charlie sets up the meeting in the wrecking yard, he knows that Molly is an opportunist and that he works for Maynard, but Maynard works for the mob who are willing to pay extra to find out if the bank robbery was an inside job. For this reason, Charlie does a flyover and spots Molly's car among the wrecks just as he suspected he would, but Molly doesn't know that Charlie again has a backup plan with a little help from Maynard's own secretary. The third lesson from the movie is speed, moving fast, being decisive. Art of War Chapter 11, The Nine Situations. Rapidity is the essence of war. Take advantage of the enemy's unreadiness. Make your way by unexpected routes and attack unguarded spots. Once Harmon plays his hand and issues his threat, Charlie goes into motion right away, moves the stolen money out of the trailer, stops by the dentist's office to exchange his records with Harmon's and sets the man up to be killed by Molly. The fourth lesson from the film is deception. The Art of War, Chapter 4, Tactical Dispositions. The general who is skilled in defense hides in the most secret recesses of the earth. He who is skilled in attack flashes forth from the topmost heights of heaven. Thus, on the one hand, we have ability to protect ourselves. On the other, a victory that is complete. Also, chapter one, laying plans. Pretend to be weak that he, your enemy, may grow arrogant. When Harmon threatens Charlie, Charlie goes along as though nothing happened, pretending to be looking out for both of their interests and going out of his way to earn Harmon's trust by reassurances, all the while setting Harmon up for the kill. Art of War, Chapter 11, The Nine Situations. Success in warfare is gained by carefully accommodating ourselves to the enemy's purpose. At first, then, exhibit the coyness of a maiden until the enemy gives you an opening. Afterwards, emulate the rapidity of a running hare and it will be too late for the enemy to oppose you. Charlie then delivers flowers to Maynard's secretary, follows her home, and seduces her. After they make love, Miss Fort tells Charlie not to trust her boss, Mr. Maynard. The Art of War, Chapter 2, Waging War. Captured soldiers should be kindly treated and kept. Also, Chapter 13, The Use of Spies. Knowledge of the enemy's dispositions can only be obtained from other men. Charlie Bark is one tight film. Like all of Don Siegel's films, lean, mean, and under two hours, every minute of which is completely entertaining with action, intrigue, intelligence, and quite a bit of humor. 
The main stars of the film are Matthew and Joe Dunn walking tall Baker as Molly, a swaggering, no-nonsense hitman that likes his eggs over easy, dry wheat toast, tea with honey, and most importantly, no whores. Charlie Vard fits Matthew perfectly as the cold, calculating elder statesman to Andrew Robinson's rash, impulsive Harmon, and actor John Vernon is also perfectly cast as the bank president out to cover his ass after losing the mob's money. I have a couple of favorite scenes. One involves Molly repossessing the car from the brother. The other scene involves Molly and the one-legged dude named Tom that owns the gun shop. There is also a great title sequence at the beginning that's like a retrospective on the days when things were much simpler. This is a great Don Siegel primer for those who haven't seen any of his films or may have seen without being aware of it. Thanks for watching this video review of director Don Siegel's 1973 heist thriller Charlie Vark starring Walter Matthau, Joe Don Baker, and Andrew Robinson. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to my channel for more quality videos and reviews such as this one. Thank you.